All right, we are going to pick up where we left off um, from yesterday's split video. Um, so th this one, we're just mainly going to focus on plant cells. So we know that plant cells, as well as animal cells, are eukaryotic because they have a nucleus. They also have membrane-bound organelles, membrane-bound organelles, there we go. Um, and many of them are the same as a animal cell. So instead of just going over them again, we're just going to reference them and then we're going to talk about the ones that are different for a plant. So a plant cell does have a cell membrane as well as a vacuole. So the vacuole is something we need to address. Now I do need it to be known that a vacuole is actually found in an animal cell as well. However, it's not nearly as vital as it is in a plant cell. And the size is very different. So therefore the structure of the vacuole does play an important role in the function for those um, cellular processes. So in a vacuole, its whole function is to store water, food, waste for the cell. But for the plant cell, its main purpose is to store water. Because plants um, cannot get up and walk around, they have to wait on environmental factors, they have a very large organelle. This is an adaptation to allow it to be able to store large amounts of water. This also does play a, um, a vital role in turgor pressure, which you um, should have learned in seventh grade, that helps a plant with the structure. Have you ever seen a plant that has gone a while without rain? They look like they're wilted, they start to sag, and what's actually happening is only the cell wall is providing the structure and the uh, vacuole is dry, so it shrank, and that is causing the plant to wilt. The moment you water it, you can actually go back a couple minutes later and see that the plant has perked up because the water has absorbed through the roots, moved through the xylophone, and into the cells and into the vacuole. And that vacuole stretches out and pushes on the outside of the cell wall to provide that additional support, and that's what we call turgor pressure. Um, so this is like what makes lettuce crisp. You know, if it goes a while without it, it can become real droopy and not be crisp and kind of just saggy. Um, like I said, if there's no water, the plant will wilt. Okay, so if we look back at this, um, notice like how long it is. It can push on these outer cells. So now let's also focus on chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are very easy to identify um, especially if it's a colored picture because they're always going to be green because there is a very special pigment inside chloroplast which is called chlorophyll which is what allows the plant to capture that radiant energy and convert it through a chemical reaction into um, glucose through the process called photosynthesis. So let's talk about a chloroplast. The function is to trap energy from the sun to produce food for the plant. The green in color is because of chlorophyll, which makes the pigment green, which is why plants are tend to be green. And so when you actually look at a chloroplast, it looks like a oval shape that has stacks of coins in it. And these stacks of coins are what we call the grana, and each one is actually called a thylakoid. And so this is where the photosynthesis occurs, and we're going to go into so much detail when we go into photosynthesis and cellular respiration that I'm going to save that for later. But just know that the chloroplast is only found in plant cells and photosynthetic um, protista uh, that does provide photosynthesis. And then the last one that we're going to talk about that is special just for the plant cell is the cell wall. Now the cell wall is going to be on the outside of the cell membrane. So it is a lot stronger and thicker and it's actually made from the carbohydrate, the polymer cellulose. So the cell wall's function is it provides support and protects not only the cell but also the cell membrane. And like I said, it's always going to be found outside the cell membrane. So cell wall first and then the cell membrane. Um, so when we talk about cellulose, we know, remember when we modeled the carbohydrates and we had the pipe cleaner and the beads to represent glucose, cellulose is just many, 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 many cellulose uh, glucose sugars tightly bound together to make that polysaccharide um, 
cellulose, which is not even easily broken down by organisms. And so very special animals like cows have to have three stomachs to break that glucose down because it is so strong, which is what makes it a great material for cell walls. And then, of course, it is, like we said, a eukaryote, so it still has the nucleus and the dense region in the middle, the nucleolus, where the DNA is contained. It does have ribosomes to make proteins, the mitochondria to make energy. Yes, it does photosynthesis for energy, but it also uses ATP as well, because as we know, the sun is not out 24 hours a day. It has Golgi um, complex and bodies to help sort and distribute things throughout the cell. It has rough endoplasmic reticulum to make proteins and to send things and provide a path for things in the cell. It has smooth ER to make lipids for its cell membrane. And again, that vacuole to store food and water. Chloroplast for photosynthesis. A cell wall for extra support. And a cytoplasm, the jelly-filled substance that supports all the organelles and also provides nutrients. So that's it. Um, these are the organelles that we're going to be going over. And so at the very end of your notes, I want you to draw this Venn diagram comparing plant and animal cells. And you should have already answered a question like that today in class. Um, so it should be really easy. All I want you to do is talk about the organelles, okay? We don't have to go into other characteristics. Of course you can if you want to, but I just want you to compare and contrast what only a plant cell has, what only an animal cell has, and what they all have in common. And I'll see you tomorrow.